your name after you come in, can you? Hey. End of the year, um, we're going to do a LinkedIn discussion about the year in review from 2021. Can't, can't wait to have the next year start and see what actually happens. I actually went back and looked at what I predicted for 2021 back in 2020. And um, I think a couple of things came to fruition. One was the uh, newsletters being available to more people. Um, and what I didn't think about was creator mode um, at the time. And I think that... I'd be curious to know from the panel, from you, Jeff, Brenda, and Kevin, what are some of the things that you um, think have been your successes, challenges, or things you like more than anything else? And I'd love to have people in the chat just kind of let us know as where they're coming in from. Hopefully I have my New Jersey uh, group here too. Uh, Christine Dykman was going to join us, but she got COVID on Sunday. Mm. Um, so she um, well, may be listening to us from home, and uh, Marty had a, had a conflict. But I think I thank you guys so much. So, Jeff, let me start with you at the top. What, what have okay. you experienced this year? Well, some of the things that I've liked, uh, one, of the, one of my, I think, most successful things that, that really has helped my brand and helped my profile, et cetera, was cover story, um, especially since I didn't have to build it myself. <laughs> uh, instant shout out. I'm going to shout out to Jillian Whitney, okay? Uh, because she did, she did uh, not only an intro video for me earlier in in the year, but also she did a my cover story for me, and she did it exactly the way I wanted it done, which was basically not me, not me being the talking head. Uh, so that that really worked. Okay, um, biggest probably biggest disappointment, frustration, if you will, for the year, is that LinkedIn continues to roll stuff out and never tells anybody what's coming. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's, I, and maybe we're just, that's, maybe that's the quote unquote new normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not new, but it is normal. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's that's, that's the, the, the best and the worst for me as far as the year is concerned. I have some friends on the inside, I always call it inside, right? right? And they said the reason they never announce features, right, is because of the, the way they do these staggered rollouts, that only a small percentage is going to get them. And if they announce it, and Jeff and Kenneth and, and Brenda and I, we get it. Nobody else does. And everybody else goes to help and says, where's mine? I want it now. And it blows up help. help. Yeah. And that's why they don't announce it. The other thing is, and this year has been a, a particular good instance of this, is sometimes these features don't work. And they blow <laughs> up and they fall apart and they have to change and they modify them and they do all this kind of stuff. So if you announced it at the beginning, by the time you got it out to everybody, it would be a, an apple, not an orange, right? So they're like, well, we'll wait yeah. till it becomes an apple and then we'll tell everybody. And the crazy thing, and Jeff, you yeah. and, and Jillian, and I read this the other day, you start to think you're insane because you're like, all of a sudden something's changed. But nobody's talking about it. Did it really change? Is that really different? You have to have your eye on that. So I think yeah. sometimes people get rollouts and don't even know it until yeah. one of us or somebody yeah. in, within this type yeah. of uh, in experts or whatever you want to call us, until somebody tells them that it's there. And then they go look and they go, oh, I have it. They may have had it for three months. As of two days ago, I think, I mean, I think it was that 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 recent, um, the John Asperian, our buddy in the UK, Okay, still doesn't have dark mode. He has dark mode on his mobile, but not dark mode on the desktop. That's me. I got half dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're half dark. The right sad on. part about it, I use my mobile maybe 3% of my time, and I love yeah. dark mode. I want it on the desktop so bad, and I can't have it. And then my wife, who doesn't, you know, works with me, but doesn't like LinkedIn, has it on both. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'll never turn that on. I'm like, what? You know, why couldn't they give that to me? Not giving it to her, you know? It's uh, it's crazy, but it is random. So I guess that's the best thing about it. What about you, Brenda? 
So what was the question? There was two questions. I well, think. basically like the, the hits and misses or the good and bad of LinkedIn in 2021 or things that you, you know, have kind of uh, thought about would be, you know, yeah. just, just a, a general. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to give a rant. I'm going to get my soapbox. I'm going to put my soapbox up right now and jump on top of it here. Ooh, look out. LinkedIn, we have LinkedIn, there's a, a, a community of women, and maybe you guys know when I say women, where I'm going to go with this. There's a community of women out here who are very um, irritated by the process by which um, people that are using LinkedIn inappropriately are getting away with it. And there's a tool when you get an inappropriate message on LinkedIn, there's a tool that you can report that message to LinkedIn. And LinkedIn will look into it, I'm going to use my finger air quotes, look into it, and they will report back whether or not they feel that that is in violation of their policies. Now, some are blatant, and they they mark them as inappropriate right away, and you can block the person, and I will report and block. I, I will do that. Um, other times, we'll get little messages like, hello, beautiful. And, you know, we'll report that to LinkedIn, and sometimes LinkedIn will say, no, it doesn't violate our principles. Um, we all know where those those messages are going. And um, Sweta Regmi, who's up in Toronto, she just posted about this yesterday. And she she thinks her post may have been shadow banned because it really got no visibility. And I think she's got like over 200,000 followers. But she was complaining and she did screen captures showing what the people said and LinkedIn's responses to that. LinkedIn, you can do better. There is a way that you can identify words and statements that are used in combination with each other. Hello, beautiful is not a statement you should be using to women on LinkedIn that you do not know. I'm sorry, it's not. So end rant. I will get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Looking forward to a good 2022 on LinkedIn. <laughs> no, I think as guys, we have to all do better, honestly. And I, I think, you know, I think Brenda and others, I think, you know, how I feel about it. It's just so annoying because we can't even have a separate way to call people out. We tried it one time. We actually did it on a, on a session together. We found a post. I, I don't know if you were part of that, Brenda. We were on Clubhouse. We saw a yep. post of mm -hmm. someone who made a joke. And we, and we said, is this really funny or something? And we were, I think it was, um, yeah. was, was it Liam or someone? I, I thought that was very I, interesting. I, I had a guy reach out to me and he made some crack. And I replied back to him and I said, I'm sorry, can you explain how to me how that's funny? And it was like a very misogynistic wife and apron kind of a comment type of thing. And I have no nothing against aprons. I own them. I like them. But the way that he used it in his post was obviously um, gender roles in, in his you know mind of, of what he saw. And I replied back and he actually worked for a well-known organization. And I think we got into a conversation about it. But, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a way that things could be done better. I, I'm still having an issue right now with an individual that's um, it's. It's borderline stalkerish. He's never really crossed the line publicly. And I don't know if he's just smart enough to know where the line is, but he's found a loophole. If you attend an event with a person, you cannot block them. So he signs up for all the events that I've, I've either hosted or attended. And now I can't block him and LinkedIn won't do anything about it. Mm. So there, there's an interesting loophole that exists out there. There's a lot of great things on the platform and I love LinkedIn and um, I'm so glad to be here with talking with all you guys about it too. So I don't want to derail us completely, no. here, but no. you know, there's issues I think out there. I, I totally agree with you, Brenda. And I, and I think the other piece of advice that I give to people all the time is don't stop reporting it. Yeah. Keep doing it. Keep making sure that you identify it to LinkedIn. Okay. Because eventually they will get better at it. I mean, you know, you know let, let's look at the history of things here, right? You know, at one point in time, LinkedIn said that they were going to move things into anti-bot. They were going to stop all of the anti-bot kind of things. Uh, you know, I, I, I might as well stab myself in the back on that one because I was a victim of that particular process, as you folks already both mm -hmm. know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got called a bot, okay? You know, LinkedIn didn't mean, didn't mean to, but... You know, without folks like, you know, Kevin Turner and, and Brenda and, and Kenneth and, and a, a gentleman from the from Scotland, by the way, Craig Allen, okay, who came to my rescue, I would still, you know, I would still probably not have a LinkedIn account. Okay, so they do get better at it. They do listen to people eventually, and they do make changes about it eventually as well. Because, because I am now, this is the good news, okay? The bad news was, yeah, that I, I, I got put in LinkedIn jail. The best news of all is that they're assuring me that I, that will never happen to me ever again. 
ever. <laughs> yeah. Now you can be really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so my ploy worked, right? Yes. Aha, aha. Yes. Now I control my now I control my mustache and go snidely with I'm gonna I'm gonna get you now. I'm gonna just put some some shout outs here. We have uh Doc, Doc keeps us guessing LinkedIn for sure. Uh Deborah Keenan, one of my folks here on the on the East Coast, happy and from Central Park. I was in the city yesterday. Uh not like it used to be, but certainly no complaints. Uh, Chris, uh, Brenda, you know Christopher yeah. from uh, Detroit. Detroit. Um, Nancy Steinberg from New York. Um, I have uh, Elia Francis, oh. and she said, annoying to know that there's a blurred line of what violates or not the professional community guidelines. And for me, that's probably one of the biggest challenges because I don't, and I actually did this with someone else. Um, I actually decided that, I found something that I thought was in violation of the terms and conditions. And it amazed me that, that forget about when I blocked, they just didn't, didn't agree. So it's like, who's making that call? <laughs> yeah. Well, and as recently as two days ago or so, um, I had somebody comment on one of my posts that was nothing but the link to a fiber account. Mm. Or however, you know, I think it's out. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, uh -huh. like it, it was, was like GoFundMe. <laughs> so, so my apologies to anybody who uses Fiverr, okay? But that was all it was, was a promotional link, okay? I reported it, mm -hmm. they took care of it, like that. Yeah, that's you know, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. No, I, I've noticed this week in my uh, messages, I had three messages that LinkedIn identified as this could be inappropriate content. Ooh. So they listed that. All three of them, when I went back in, because I opened it, I want to see, you know, what does LinkedIn think is inappropriate content? All three of them were, hello. That's and it. Nothing else. And they were by, you know, pictures that didn't look like real people. Hmm. Went to look at the profiles. They definitely weren't real people. But LinkedIn is catching it that's starting to, I don't know if I'm in a test program or, you know, you never know. Right. But yeah. three of them happened this week and they were all just hello. So I looked at that and said, that's an improvement. And they push it over to your, your spam folder. That's in messages. Most people don't know there is one in there, but there is one in there. It's been there for a couple of years. That's where they're pushing them towards. Mm -hmm. And you can open it up to see what that content is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they'll, Cue in on that. And they basically say that the more you report what you don't like, the more they use that as your own custom filter. So it's not just an overall site filter, but it becomes your custom filter. And I know I'm one of those when I get a hello in mail or a hello, uh, you know, direct uh, message. I report them. Yeah. I've always done that. So I don't know if it's the sign that they know what I don't like now. So they're now supporting it, but it is happening. And I think that's good process. Will they capture them all? No. Will they capture a few innocent people that are just dumb enough to start a conversation with just hello? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's too bad. And they will learn, right? You know, uh, they can always come back in 30 days if you don't block them. You know, if you're just reporting them, they can come back and try a new conversation. And See, so, one, of the, know, one of the things I wish LinkedIn would do, and this is my, my, and I think I've talked to John about this, is I'd like to know when a connection request comes in, if it's coming in from mobile or the desktop or the laptop, mm -hmm. because so mm -hmm. many people don't realize how to personalize a connection request there. I kind of have um, a cut and paste of a, of a text message, which I'll, which I'll personalize a little bit. But if I know the person's coming from mobile, I might feel differently than someone that's just sending it on a desktop. And it shouldn't be that hard for LinkedIn to make that, Make that 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 call. What do you think? It should you be come the a little default. slack. You mean? What? It should be the default. You shouldn't be able to send an invite without typing something. Agree. It would be nasty. It would be nasty. Nasty. Yeah. blank, it would and it should play. Spam. You yeah, need definitely. to have at least twenty spaces in this before you can send it, or something. You know, it's pretty simple, yeah. right? Boom. Yeah. Don't can I go, go back to one Don't of the earlier them. points too when you were talking about sure. why doesn't least LinkedIn publish the enhancements? I mean, this to me just seems like. Um, 
I mean, there's so many sites that will do this. And I use um, a site called Kajabi for website development. And they actually have a page where they have, here's a list of suggestions. Here are things that are, we're working on. Here is a list of things that are coming up next. I mean, if LinkedIn were to create a page like that and say, here are the things that are coming up, imagine the amount of hype it would create on those new features. And like creator mode, remember when they did the big splash announcement on that and it was yep. like gradual? Well, just disclaim everything with this is going to be a gradual rollout. You eventually get these mm -hmm. features. And when people message help saying, I don't have it, you send them to that page. If you send people to the help desk enough, to that help desk page rather enough, they're going to remember that's where they should go and they'll bookmark the page. Mm -hmm. And LinkedIn, you can do better. You are a progressive network. We all want to help you. I hope someone from LinkedIn is watching this video today and going, that's a brilliant idea, right? I you know, they, they had that on, well, believe it or not, they had that on Microsoft. For yes. Internet. Yes. And I yes. added my I, uh, I uh, hidden kind of uh, uh, links on LinkedIn. You could go right there and you could suggest something. Or if you found it already, you could vote for it. And if it got yes. enough votes, then they would move it forward. It's still available for Microsoft, but they took the LinkedIn page away. And I used to use that all the time. I would, you know, bug identify. I would find out stuff that I didn't know about from that. And then, you know, it was a great little tool. And uh, I always thought it was kind of like telling mom on, on, you know, your brother. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but it worked. And I got a lot done by using that Microsoft page, which they need to bring that back. But they need to do it definitely on LinkedIn. It should be there. There should be that forum kind of a, a process, and there just isn't, and there used to be. Yeah. Well, what do, what do they think we're going to do? Hold their feet to the fire on all of it? No, I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I agree with I agree with Brenda. It's kind of like, look, you don't even have to give us the nitty gritty details. Just tell mm -hmm. us what these things are, yeah. and give us a general description about what's coming down the pipe. And I'll be a happy camper. I'll be yeah. able to prepare for it. I'll be. It's you know, so baked uh, into their culture now. I, I, that's the. It's going to take somebody at the top to re-steer it. You know, so, it's so going to be a Ryan thing or a Tomar. They're going to have to say, this is now how we're going to do it because nobody else is going to. That's just It's just kind of baked into their culture. It's going to take a top down. Well, when I was, in, in I was involved with events and they had a separate group for events and they had a, a group mm -hmm. where they talked about the launch, they talked about their testing, they talked about things that they were going to be coming down the pike and we got a chance to actually create events and do things. And it seems to me, why wouldn't it be, why couldn't they create a separate group like that of people that get invited to it and you, you agree not to share stuff or whatever it is, but you have a heads up or just something. Yeah. And they, yeah. they used to have a great beta tester program. I, I remember the first probably few years I was on several yeah. rollouts before they became rollout and they would, they would have you use it. And then they would have you fill out these questionnaires and write stuff up about it. What yeah. worked, what didn't work. It was incredible. As opposed to what they do now, which is called crowd beta testing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I love that. That was the smartest okay. thing that they Let's were do doing. Let's do the kick the tires method, right? <laughs> I just wanted to call out. Nice to see a screen of favorite experts. Oh, we have uh, Anne coming in from Belgium, which is cool. Um, Janelle Rosina, one of my great contacts here. She's a uh, executive recruiter. Um, I'd love to. Next week, we're going to get into that even more. So, Patricia, Brenda, and I got a creepy dating profile type unprofessional chat. Mm -hmm. I checked mutual connections and reported blocked and alerted Ooh, that's a good former idea. mutual connections so that they wouldn't be bothered. On a related yeah. note, there's actually a couple of us that we've started sharing um, experiences. Stephanie Marone, I think, is one. Leah Turner um, is another. Um, unicorn, what's her name? Ariel Lee. Is that her Ariel name? Lee, Ariel yep. Lee. Um, so there's a couple of us that we've started to kind of share these experiences. Because one thing LinkedIn told me, the help told me, the guy that was trying, I was trying to block that I couldn't, they said, if enough people report him, they will take action. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't want to get somebody pushed off of the network for the wrong reasons. But it just seems to me like there is power in community. And that's why I'm, I love that you do events like this kind of where you bring all of us together. So we can kind of crowdsource and give ideas to the LinkedIn community. But I think there's also, if we see patterns of behavior, I love that tip. Like, let's look and see who the mutual connections are. I've done that with other people mm -hmm. too. I've been like, hey, uh, reached out to Mildred. I'm like, Mildred, are you connections with XYZ person? Yes. Have you had this experience? Yeah, it was a little bit off for me too. I'm like, okay, I'm not just reading this wrong. But yeah. um, there is, you know, there, there are some things that we can do from a, a group perspective, I guess, as well. Yeah, five, five reports within three days yeah. will get a profile review. 
Okay. So Alex, Alex, so brings up this what's thing interesting up. though is there are people who are taking advantage of it in the wrong way, and they're actually called spite pods. So if somebody is doing really well, right, they can actually get a group of five people oh. together and they all report the person and the person's profile gets shut down. It's happened. Um, you were, you were uh, mentioning um, Ariel Lee. She had the little unicorn yes. in her yes. name. She was, I believe, a target of a spite pot. Leah like, Turner. Was, I don't like that. They get in there and they do it. It happened to me. And I only found out because one of the people that was involved in it came and told me later. And that really? was, uh, you know, when I started uh, many, many years ago, I always had Kevin D. Turner because there's a couple other really famous Kevin Turners for Microsoft and Walmart and a football player and a couple other things. And so I always added the D in there. And mm -hmm. I got a spike pod that turned me in. And they came back to me and they, they basically shut my profile off on a Friday afternoon. You know, of course, nobody at LinkedIn. I had to get a friend to kind of go in there and find out what was happening. And that's what it was. I was reported for that. And they told me mm -hmm. X amount of reports came in a quick period that you're putting the D in your first name, which for a long time on LinkedIn wasn't allowed. You could only use your legal first name and your legal last name. Now, you know, and this started, I guess, about two years ago, they added back in that you can use a nickname. So if you were born William, you could be Willie, right? And so that's allowed. And so I said, well, I went back to him because it was turned off for about four or five months. I went back to him and said, that's my nickname, Kevin D. <laughs> and, and they said, OK. And I got permission to kind of put it back in. So it's it's interesting that people are using that in the right way. And then they're also using it in the wrong way. Hmm. And just got to make sure, you know, if if a group of people get together to report somebody, Make sure it's really something that should be reported. So, right. Kevin, are, is it is it like you're reporting someone and LinkedIn is agreeing that there's a problem with what's being reported, or is it just a random report? Like it just seems like it can be just you know how vague those reports are, right? right. Yeah, and, and it says like a report for um, unusual information on the profile, right? Something like that. That's what I would have been reported for. And because mm -hmm. five people reported me within the three days, LinkedIn says we'll take a look. They went into my profile and the first thing they saw was right at the top. Oh, that's a violation. Oh. And they went through the whole profile and they said that was the only violation they found when they communicated with me. But that's how they do it. Those things are so vague. And that's one thing I hope LinkedIn does this year is gives us the ability when we report something, let us type up a small paragraph. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm reporting them because they, yeah. you know, called me cutie and mm -hmm. they have a reputation and they're chasing people around and 10 other people know these people. They're, you know, bad people. I'd like to be able to write that. Yeah. Because what happens is they go and they look at the profile, they look at the thing and it says, hello. Well, that's not so bad. Right. But if you could have mm -hmm. told them this is why it is bad and this is, you know, what I'm looking at, then they have something to go on because, the majority of the reports right now, and I do them all the time, I would say 80% of them come back with no fault found, right? They didn't do anything wrong. And yet you're looking at it right there and you're like, that's absolutely a blatant violation. But they don't see it on the other side because they don't really know what they're looking for. And they're doing it so fast. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just, they must be hiring, you know, anybody to do it. Right? <laughs> they're not experts. And we know that sometimes, sometimes it helps you get people who are brilliant. Sometimes you don't. Right. It's a mixed bag. Sometimes you have to educate them. And I think the same thing is going on with this reporting group. But again, they're flying a little bit blind because those definitions are so vague that they don't really know what they're looking for. And I hope that LinkedIn will do that this year. Give us that ability to have a definition and maybe even at that point have a second review. Right. So if the person still doesn't agree, there should be ability to click that and say second review and it goes up to their manager to then review it again, you know? So I wanted to ask me, the group. that solves the problem. Alex, and, and this is a question, and Brenda, Brenda, you answer this really well all the time. Uh, you get, <clears> you get requ request to connect at times within an hour, someone attempts to tell you something. How are you dealing with it? Um, she usually, they usually disconnect. I love what you do, Brenda. Um, do you want to uh, share that here? What, how you Yeah, are you referring to my automation response, Kenneth? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, 
so if if I get an Im invitation to connect that seems like it's automated and we can all smell these from a mile away because they look right. like they're automated. Um, let me see if I can find one in my inbox right now. Um, hi, Brenda. Old school networking seems to have fallen by the wayside, but I've always found the adage your network is your net worth to be through like nothing about me. It's like copy and paste. Let's connect on LinkedIn kind of a thing. So I will I will pull that up and I'll reply back to the person just with one word. T.E.S.T. -E That's what I'm going to do. Test. I'm gonna reply back with test. And then I wait. Um, usually this is with automation software, there's a timing element to it. They don't reply back right away. It's usually within 20 minutes, 45 minutes or so, then they'll reply back. And if it's automation, they'll continue on with the second phase of the message, which will be thanks, insert first name, Brenda, for connecting. Uh, visit my Calendly and let's set up a discovery call or something. And then I'll reply back again, test one, two, three. Um, and then I'll get a third message back for them. Um, something, you know, generic or whatever. Or maybe at that point, it's a real person because usually there's like a trigger how many messages back and forth before a real person actually reads it. And then at some point between usually the third and fourth message or maybe after the fourth, I'll get a real person saying, what did you mean by test? Or what was that? What was that that you put in there? And then I say, I use this technique to screen out bots and automation. And here's what I do now, Kenneth. I will say, are you using automation to send out these invites? If so, which service are you using? And then they tell me, and you guys know what I do with that? Then I, I look it up real quick, and it's usually one of the band services. Mick Adams has a post of band automation software, and then I go into his post. It's a blog. I go into it, and I say, hey, Mick, here's another one to add to your list. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and then I will tr reply back to the person, and I will let them know. I'm like, hey, are you aware that automation is banned by LinkedIn, and it'll eventually result in your account getting locked up? And probably about half the time they'll say, no, I didn't know that. And then I give them Nick's blog, you know, they probably don't know that I've just added their software in. Um, but sometimes I get people saying, well, this, it, it's usually the founders of the automation. Well, this isn't a violation. We're applying by all the rules, blah, blah, blah. But you go to the automation software's website, nowhere on there can you find a real person's name or a link back to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. That should be a red flag for you right there. So little technique. And you, you can go little. to the engineer post and see what are approved uh, LinkedIn approved software to use like Hootsuite for, uh, you know, setting a schedule for posts that's approved by LinkedIn. They can yeah. be automated through LinkedIn. So there's certain automation that is, but they're always going to be on that uh, engineering blog list as an approved partner for that tool set. And so hey, it's Kevin, really can easy you add to in that link for us later after this, the live stream today. Can. Definitely yeah, can. Great. And that's Thank a cool you. way. If you want to tell them, look, they're not on the list. So LinkedIn hasn't approved them. So you could lose your account. Yeah. The only only time I would not ever respond back is if it's an in mail, because if you do respond back to an in mail, they then now have open rights to communicate with you. Yeah. LinkedIn mm -hmm. sees it as you have a relationship. So now they can just keep coming back and coming back and coming back, even without in mail. So that's one thing about in mail you got to be real careful with. If you do respond to it, you've opened the door and LinkedIn looks at that as a relationship. It's also a revenue stream for LinkedIn, right? So <laughs> they're trying to make it easy on their customer. So I, I would say if it's a regular DM, you know, you can you can send back and forth. But if it's an in-mail, be careful because you now opened a relationship. I it's just shut off my in-mails. I don't give them because what 99% of them are sales messages anyways. They, yeah. they serve no yeah. value to me. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me, you'll look at my profile. You can find my email address and email me or... Yeah. You yep, can message do. me or even better yet, invite me to connect. I think, Jeff, you totally agree with me on this one. Absolutely. But, you know, that's that's the beauty of this, okay? Because I, there are four people on this call, and, there, and, there, and there's a whole bunch of other people who are listening to this call. Every single one of us should use it the way that we feel comfortable with using it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, I, I have not only – I require my email in order to connect with me, okay? But I give my people my email on my profile. If you took the time to go to my profile, you go to find it. So you can find my email and you can connect with me, right? But by the same token, one of the other things that I've done, and one of the things that I like most about, I think this was a 2021 feature, okay, is something called open profile. Remember that one, folks? Okay, mm -hmm. you can now open your profile up so you can accept a message from anybody on LinkedIn. And I have done that as well. OK, so I don't mind. I, I, I don't mind getting in, in mails. I, the emails I get are not spam. OK, mm -hmm. and if they are, I'll handle my spam and, they're, and I'm done with them. And, they, and it's over. So I'm, I'm trying to stay as open to the to the conversations as possible. 
but that's just because it works for me. Okay. You've got to decide exactly how you want to handle each of these different situations. But the key part about it is, is there's multiple ways to do it. And you can find a way that probably fits your style. It just makes sense to me. Absolutely. I mean, what I wish LinkedIn would just have multiple um, folders within the mail. I mean, you know, you have all these different folders. I'd love to be able to have things flagged automatically to spam or something like that, or just be able to make that call. So I don't even have to see them. Easier said than done. Yeah, but can it? You know, it actually used to be that way. I know. Because it yeah. used to be, and it used to be like mail instead of like texting. Yeah. Okay? And and now it's like texting. So it's real difficult to implement folders inside of texting. Yeah. As far as I know. Those folders are, some of them pre-exist. If you're in that little search bar. It's a spam folder. In, yeah. in their thing, yeah. You click on those three little lines, you yeah. will get yeah. The folders like archive and yeah, you know, yeah. group. Un unread messages. And yes. unread. Yeah, that's best. That's what the most useful feature should be. Its own little button is unread, you know. Yeah, um, but yeah, they they moved them from kind of tabs into that little drop down. If you don't know the little drop downs there, you don't use them. You yeah. know, and it, it's a shame. Any thoughts about how engagement has changed this past year? Creator mode, non-creator mode views, all that, or, cause I don't get caught up with the numbers myself, but I know a lot of people I work with do get caught up. Oh, it's down 30%. Should I be on creative mode or not on creative mode? What's the difference? I mean, again, I have no control over that myself, but I'd be curious to get your, your sense of that. I think engagement is, is dipped again this year. And I don't know if it's, um, clutter more and more people are getting on LinkedIn and there's an algorithm shift that's, that's occurred as a result. I mean, the numbers keep going up on LinkedIn every year. I've noticed though in the past year, I mean, people like the three of you, Kenneth, Jeff, and Kevin, that I used to see in my homepage feed all the time, I just don't see them anymore. Mm -hmm. And LinkedIn recently rolled out the new feature where there's the bell notification. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's working perfectly though, because if we click on notify for all the people we want, we're going to get a ton of notifications and then we're going to be back to where we are right now, right? Yeah, yeah, I, did a, yeah I did a post about that one. And, yeah. And, okay. and by the way, so, I, don't, I don't even have, I don't see it yet. That's one of the features I don't have yeah. yet. Yeah. I can't ring anybody else's bell. Mine, mine can be seen <laughs> apparently. Okay, for people who got so you know, so Kevin told she, you know, told me about that one, but I can't ring anybody else's bell. I, and and I really want to use this. I have been yeah. asking for this for so long. It would have been a great Christmas present, LinkedIn. Okay, if you'd given me the fact that I can say I want to see Brenda's stuff and I want to see Kevin's stuff and I want to see Ken's stuff. Okay, in my in my notifications, I want that. I really do. I want yeah. that as soon as possible. And the, when that feature works right, it's not just in the notifications. It is in your feed. The problem with the feed is it's a funnel, right? Yeah. And it's, uh, I always look at it like a one-armed bandit in Vegas. You pull that thing and it's going, right? And it might stop and you get one and you've just missed 700, right? It is a feed. So it's constant. So that's the beauty of the notification. It basically says, we just threw this in your feed. You can either go find it or you can click on the notification. So it is going into the feed itself. Um, when that feature originally launched, they had some issues in some of the versions of the platform that had uh, uh, privacy notifications that changed. There, were, there mm -hmm. used to be 12. Now there's like 24. Um, they finally cleared that glitch up. And that was why that's why Bell is on hold. Those who got it, got it, and mm -hmm. the rollout is stalled right now. They're coming back in. So how do you know this, Kevin? Is this just from talking to people who are LinkedIn employees, or is this this word on the street? Or It's it's a it's a lot of everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, I always tell people, if you're going to be on LinkedIn, it's going to be part of your business. You better mm -hmm. know people at LinkedIn that will have conversations with you. Yeah. Um, you know, because it is important. And because sometimes, like Jeff found out, like I found out on a Friday afternoon, you can be left in the dark if you don't know somebody there who will take your phone call. You know, or you know. unless you know people like all of us who are super interconnected, because yeah. that's what you did, Jeff, right? Didn't you like notify yes. all of us in a Facebook group or an email that said, I can't get I in, sent, can anybody yeah. help, right? I sent, out, I sent out a couple of emails to a yep. couple of tr trusted friends. Those trusted friends put posts out there. Posts, yeah. Right. You know, and there was even a there was even a there was even a hashtag free Jeff Young for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, it was it was so 
it was re really, it ended up being such a positive experience for me, not a negative experience for me because of all the community that came to my aid, okay, and got me, and literally it got me back online in like eight hours. It was amazing. It was, so, so yeah, you, you, get, you got to know somebody, but just knowing. And now, and now you've got an inside connection. Well, yeah. now, I, you know, now I've got. <laughs> Now, because I've been talking with those folks that, you know, that were helping yep. me work out why it happened in the first place. Yes, I've got a couple of people that I can actually send stuff to directly now. Okay. Yeah. And, that's, and, that's and, key. and to some degree, that, that, that's one of the reasons I've, I've got that is that I've saved all the old um, conversations that I've had mm -hmm. with help. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even if that's, even if that's a closed, you know, even if it's a closed issue, okay, you can still go back to help and reopen it. Okay. If you want to, to start the conversation again. So if it ever happens to me again, you know, I just start the conversation over again. Mm -hmm. Again, I'll go to LinkedIn and I'll say, hey, LinkedIn, you said this was never going to happen to me <laughs> yeah. again. And it did. OK, so come back, come back, Shane, Jane, come back. OK, and so so it, 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 again, it's 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 knowing how it works. It's knowing how the system works. It's knowing how your community works, you know, and, and, and it, it, I, I couldn't, it couldn't have been any better for me. There just wouldn't have been any, unless there, unless I'd had, you know, the, the CEO of LinkedIn that was watching my profile 24 seven, 365 to watch if anything happened to me. That would have been the only, the only way it would have been better for me. Yeah, it turned out great. And we, we all know they're gonna make changes. I mean, the, the, the changes are going to continue to happen. And when you make changes, sometimes when you make a change, you break something. I, you know, it, it just happens that way. And, and I'm going to tell problem. you, I've been, I've been monitoring the changes. I, I, I used to do one of my classes, one of my seminars was what's new on LinkedIn and why should you care? Okay. Now, I, I, through the 2018 and 2019 timeframe, I was monitoring all the changes and I was keeping a separate document. I don't know how Kevin does it. Well, Kevin has an article now, but, but I, I don't know how he did it before. But I, but I, had, I had a separate PDF document. Okay. For about a year, I was monitoring changes. Do you know how many changes LinkedIn made in that year that I was monitoring stuff? <laughs> Over 60 different changes. Yeah. That's more than one change a week, folks. Okay, And it's going to continue to like that. Now, I kept doing that until about the end of 2019. You know what happened to me at the end of 2019? I connected with this guy down here. <laughs> okay, Because he's the king of what's new on LinkedIn, and I don't need to keep my list anymore. Because guess <laughs> But you add to the list, and that's well, key because you you see things sometimes we're, before. We're both, yeah, we're I both see looking things at the same time. Yes. It, and if we all do that and get it in there, that's how we get smart, right? Is well, yeah. sharing I mean, all this stuff. Luckily, I got something before you did once. Okay, yeah. you and I and Jillian. That's the story you related earlier. Okay, and so the beauty I, of that is, I had the old stuff, stuff and so we, we can, can do compare it them visually because once you have the new stuff. You don't have anything to compare it to, right? It's gone. Boom. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, like, well, how do you say that's it. different if you can't yeah. show it's different? And so that's why it's real important to do that kind of collaboration and share is we'll all be at different times of a rollout all the time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you never want to be unknowing of what is happening, right? And so mm -hmm. you've got to be sometimes on the front share. Sometimes you're the middle. Sometimes you're the end. But there's always something you can kind of contribute into the process of educating and getting that information out. Yeah. And I think that's the cool part. And I, and I know it blows LinkedIn away because I've got a couple of people at LinkedIn who call me and said, how'd you find out about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, it's out there. They're like, I didn't know. I have people. I know people. Yeah, I know somebody. Yeah, there's people yeah. in LinkedIn I who I like, didn't know. Not the first to report it, but I, there's like, I know there's like that bell curve where you like, you know, the bleeding edge of technology. And then there's mm -hmm. like the people that are right after that. And then I like to be like right before the bell curve hits. Like that's where I am. Cause I like, even like I'll use like newsletters as an example, like we all got them and everybody was like super, super excited and everybody put up their first newsletter and they pushed it out and then a bunch of people made mistakes and they reported and I remember Rachel Simon was one and she said, I think if you change it, it unpublishes it or something. So I kind of waited and watched and then I also realized, I mean, there's like the human behavior element of it too. I don't know about you guys, but I like started tuning out the newsletters because I was getting hit with too many requests. So I'm like, I'm going to wait till this all kind of settles down. And now what I know based on what I've seen other people do, here's what I'm going to do with mine. It's going to be a heck of a lot shorter because everybody's putting too much content in these things. It's going to have an intriguing mm -hmm. title, an intriguing image, and I'm going to do it monthly. 
because I'm not going to kill myself to get a newsletter out. Right. But that in and of itself, I mean, the newsletter, when I look at my profile views in the past 90 days, it was like my second largest spike in 90 days. Yeah. So it was like, it went huge. It's when back down to it. like where it was before. But like, for me, it's like, I watch all of you and we all kind of do this. We all watch each other. We learn from each other. And then we are the apostles almost of LinkedIn changes. We go out and we, we tell, come with us, people. Here's the new changes. Here's what you don't want to do and why. And here's what you should right. do and yeah. why. And we are basically unpaid employees of, of LinkedIn. I mean, Absolutely. you're welcome, LinkedIn. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no it's, it's true. It's true. I mean, you know, that, that's the cool part about it is, is that I, I think the cool part about knowing Kevin is that I know he's probably going to be able to have it documented every single time because he's got a place where he documents all the new stuff. Okay. So I know if I want to find out about it, I can go there and find out about it. I can also contribute to it. If I get it beforehand, I can compare notes with it, right? But but the the, the key to this is that that I'm going to actually, you're right. I'm I'm the biggest guinea pig you ever saw, okay? <laughs> because, and I don't even have whiskers, but because I am going to be out there and I'm going to be on the front lines and I'm going to be trying this stuff, okay? So everything that comes down the pipe, I'm going to look at and I'm going to try it. And if you want to know, you know, if you want to know what's new, talk to Kevin. If you want to know what's new and how you can be effective at it, talk to all of us. Yeah. yeah. Because sooner or later, we are going to actually have used it and we'll figure out what works and what doesn't work about it. And we all use it for different yeah. reasons I mean, in I, different ways, right? So yeah. these tools do a lot of different things depending on how you use them or don't use them, right? Well, yeah. well she, made the, she made the comment about newsletters, okay? Everybody yeah. thought newsletters were new, right? I've had a newsletter since August of 2020. I know, That's right? where I learned all my stuff was watching it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, they, they just kind of started rolling it out to everybody else, which is what I asked them to do a long time ago anyway. I had a friend of mine. In, in what, I, what I started to do is I, this was a task. I figured I would check it. I started subscribing to every newsletter that I got. And I started putting yeah. them in because I wanted to see what people were doing and not doing. And how many times were people going to do a newsletter and then do another one? As opposed to, well, I don't, I can't do it after the, the next time. And so like Brendan kind of knows what I'm thinking about doing for a newsletter, but I'm just taking my time because there's just so much stuff out there. Right now, I want to do yeah. it like Brenda probably once a month, but I'd rather see what everyone else is doing. And I think if anything else, when you're on LinkedIn, look at what other people are doing, get a sense of it. Don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to be different. Sometimes it's just reading to get an idea. Um, Cause I guess some of my best ideas in the three of you and um, there uh, I'll make sure you guys get, you know, get, get a recognition for them, but we all kind of help each other and support each other. I, I love Brenda's term co uh, collaboration, if you will. Yeah, competition. Competition. I, I, and I, I can't take credit. I first heard it from Terry Bean. I'm going to give him a Maybe. shout out in the comments. He heard it from someone else who was in a book, but we're like the, the right people will always do this. We'll always like, I don't want to take credit for it. I got to tell you where I heard it from first. So we keep that social media karma ball kind of yeah. rolling down the hill. Right. Yep. Yep. Well, and, and I agree with you, you know, I, I think the, the best thing to do is look what other people do, but then what you got to do can is make it your own. That's Absolutely. what you're going to do is make it your own. Okay. Yep. You're not going to copy somebody else. You're going to, you're going to take the best ideas and then you're going to enhance them and you're going to do something else with it yourself. And that'll make it yours. You know, that'll, that'll make it something that will be your brand in instead of their brand. I, you know, I'm not trying to copy anybody else's brand. That's not, that's not the point. Okay. But, but I will use stuff that I will be, that I will find that is effective and, and other things that I don't find are effective. Kevin, I'm sorry, but if you want dark bone, you can have mine, bud. Because <laughs> I'm never going to well, use it. I always, I, I love when you launch and you tell somebody about a feature and you're, you're thinking to yourself, this is kind of useless. I'll never use this. And they're like, no, why no, would you even tell me about, about that? That's yeah. useless. Like, because it is a new feature, right? And for somebody, it's going to be useful. You know, it just might not be for me or you, you know, exactly. but that's the way everybody should look at this stuff. You should know what's there. And then decide whether you need to use it. You don't need to use every single feature. And if you did, you would do nothing but feed features on LinkedIn. Yep. <laughs> right? So, again, it's good to know, but don't get bogged down into, I've got to have it, got to use it, got to try everything. It's not really going to produce for you. Find what does and, and, you know, work it. Absolutely. So, Kevin, I just found your hashtag. I think it's, I don't know if it's yours or not, L new LinkedIn feature. Is that where we can find and follow a lot Absolutely. of the time when you're posting. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I'm going to put that in comments too. I've been like putting stuff in comments as we're talking about them. <laughs> oh, for sure. 
I, th I think we all learn from each other. And I think when I tag people, I want to bring it to their attention for their networks too. Because, some, because my network is only so big and I want other people to know, but it's being respectful. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't want to do guerrilla tagging and tag lots and lots of people. I have to mm -hmm. trust the fact that it'll reach the right people because I get annoyed when I get tagged and I've actually untagged myself from posts that I just don't want to be on. Yeah, if it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, you know what, the, again, the beauty of this is again, that each of us has a different network, each of us has a, but each of us has a large network mm -hmm. that we can make a difference by by helping each other and and, and and going through this process. I mean, I was looking at that before we got on, gone on, on this call, okay? You know, when, when you look at the four of us, just the four of us, okay? We're talking about the, and I look at it this way, when I put something out there, I'm putting something out there to my network which, which I believe when I am doing something and I, I make a, a post, I'm trying to add value and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, and I know I don't get this many views, but I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I just spoke to over 40,000 people, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I got over 40,000 followers. And if you put all of us together, we've got between 160 and 100 and 200,000 followers, okay? That every time we put one of these things out, we, it's a possibility that all of those people are going to possibly see this thing. And I got to believe it's even more than that because that ripple effect yeah. really goes a lot farther than that. Yeah, so all the way down to the third level. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, if you're talking about the third level degree connections and that kind of stuff, we literally are talking millions of people right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's kind of shattering, actually. It's a little scary. <laughs> I've got a Boolean string if you ever want it for how oh. to get to your third level reach. Oh, no, I, I, no, I I do know how to do that. <laughs> That's yeah. interesting when you start looking at that. Yeah, now you know why LinkedIn cuts you off at three, yeah. right? Yeah. So they can sell you the other three. three degrees. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's millions and millions and millions of people. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. Well, and, and I tell people all the time about how we network, you know, with, with LinkedIn. You know, my second degree connections, I can, you know, go do the search that it shows this. I used to share this all the time. My second degree connections in the Columbus, Ohio area alone, okay? You want to know what that looks like? Have any of you ever looked at the television on Saturday and actually watched a game from the shoe in Ohio, okay? mm -hmm. OSU Stadium in Ohio? I can fill up OSU Stadium with my second degree connections in, That's great. Yeah. in wow. Columbus, Ohio. It gives it a real feel for what it's really worth. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kenneth, have we got like completely gone off the rails for you here? Like, <laughs> and it's given up. It's like they're out of control. I, I love I talking it. to everyone, and it's not about you know. I can have the idea of, of, a, of a session, but I want, and I've said this for every LinkedIn event I do. I want the conversation to flow. I don't mm -hmm. think you can really pigeon, you know, shoehorn something. So no, you, you guys haven't gotten off the rails. We'll just do this again next week. And then you need you need to get that uh, the music right for for the Oscars. Right, the playing music. It, play us off. I just watched hey, a Larry David. There's a, there's a post, <laughs> a LinkedIn Oscars post. Can I talk about one thing I'm excited about for coming into sure. 2022 on LinkedIn? Sure. Um, this is like like the little things in life that excite me, and I've been really focusing on company pages. I kind of started sensing something was happening with company pages at the end of 2020. 2020, 20, going into 2021. So I started putting more time and emphasis into growing my page. And I really feel like it's a concentrated place. Like not everybody's going to go there, but the people that will and they click follow, they're like people that are hand raisers. They want to learn more about your business. And I'm like, I found leads and I found clients from this. So um, they right now they give you a hundred invitation credits. And that means like a page admin, you can invite people that you are connected to, to follow your page. Um, so we have a hundred and about a week and a half ago, I got a message, an email from LinkedIn saying yeah. they gave me a bonus 150. So now yeah. I can send yeah. 250 invites. I was like, Merry Christmas to me. Thank you, LinkedIn. Did you guys get this too? Or I know they're kind of, Kevin, you got it too. If you, if you, no, if you send know. them out fairly regular, yeah. I think they they rewarded anybody who was doing it yeah. regular, right? So they're, and, they're throttling it though, because Michelle J. Raymond in Australia, she's a huge advocate of company pages too, and she didn't get them. So again, hmm. this goes uh, across the... We don't know because we're not behind the the curtain in the Wizard of Oz where they're making the decisions about this. But it would seem to me if you really want to kick uh, the tires on these new features, use it like roll it out to people who are heavy users of that area. So this is in the case of company pages. I mean, we are easy to find. Look up hashtag company pages. You'll find me and Michelle like you'll find people like a like roll it out to us first. 
and then we will give you feedback. I mean, we are yeah. happy to give feedback to you, right? But I, you know, for me, I see like I see pages continuing to have opportunities, and and that was just like a nice little bonus, Kenneth, that I saw coming into the end of the year. So thank you for allowing me to to share I, that. I would bet <laughs> they had something to do when they rolled those out. It may have had something to do with when you send them out, just like you send out an invite, right? If yeah. a percentage of people don't accept it, you're gonna get throttled. And I wonder if because I know Michelle sends them out all the time. She uses yeah. her hundred as soon as she gets her hundred, right? They're out the door. Well, at some point you may get to the point where a percentage of them may not be responding anymore, right? Mm -hmm. We get to that point. And I wonder if that had any play in that because I, I know that they're she's always- She's pretty good because she'll be very strategic about who she sends mm -hmm. them to because she yeah. wants to get them accepted. And some people just aren't active. And you know, we've even talked about strategies. Like if somebody sends you one, you invite them because they're going to be more likely to reciprocate on it. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Kevin, but I feel like LinkedIn is trying to randomize how they're doing this to get yeah. not just the heavy users- and there's different research methodologies to consider here with, you know, well, know they, gave, they gave me a bonus a couple months back because I had a hundred percent acceptance. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I okay. sent out a hundred. They gave me an extra hundred on top that month because they, and they basically said, because you had a hundred percent acceptance. So I know they're looking at acceptance rates mm -hmm. to reward too. So that mm -hmm. I, I think that was probably part of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, because I've even noticed, I haven't had that 100% acceptance rate after the first probably couple of runs that I did. Right? How do you so know, though, really Kevin? Do you, do you only send out 100 and then wait the whole month? Because if I get spaces, I send them out continuously throughout the month. So how do you know that they're being used? Um, you know, you, you can see who, you know, if if they have been responded to or if they have yeah. Yeah, you can see. And I, and I send mine all out on the same day, basically. Okay. I, I mean, know, I, so I, I guess if you're tracking them, if you know these are the hundred people and you're tracking them in Excel or something, and you're marking off. Okay, all of them. I, I guess I just don't. I don't track it that closely. I just anytime I have a credit, I always leave one credit open so I can show somebody how to use mm -hmm. that feature. But for the rest of the, the the month, I try to maximize every day. I go in there and I'll send out a couple more. So yeah. I, yeah. I do them once a month. Try to get them all out. Okay. I haven't been good the last couple of months. I have to admit, I just let it sit. But sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. I, I think there's going to be a lot more focused on company pages uh, in 2022 as well. I think that's a, a way that you that I think they'll expand it. They'll make it more about companies and entrepreneurs, and, you know, et cetera. Uh, another one, and I, I, I know they got to improve this, but I think one of the things that I liked and I think they're going to do more of is they're going to they're going to do more with service pages, too. Well, those two should those two should be together. I, well, they they already no. are to a certain extent. You and I just well that, that link, but I look at it. You know, link. I have a service page. Mine's still not linked we, though. We have it's a business not. together, right? Yeah. She can either have a second service page for the same group. Well, it's it, 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 makes it no should sense. be at least associated, right? Because yeah. you're doing services because you're you're a company. Me, it needs to be even or, further or blended. There yeah. shouldn't be a separate. Uh, you know, providers, yeah. uh, well, area I mean, service well, providers, it should be just part of the business page. But well, Jeff, you didn't you request to get that link to your company page. LinkedIn did that for you, right? Because mine's still not, it's not. No, they gave me the ability to do it. Yeah. They, yeah. they sent me an email that said, if you'd like, here's a button where you could actually link your service page to the button that says find out more or, you know. And you may service. have it, Brenda. Go look at the button. Yeah, I'm and, in there right you know, now. You click on it, and it may have service page as one of the options. So Kevin, I have if it Kevin. doesn't, then just pick a random option, right? And then just type in your service page. That's what I did. Yeah, I guess I never sent me the information. It still used the link. Yeah. It's so a good Kevin, workaround. I have, that, uh, does I, have a, thing. I have a I have a request for you. Why don't you reach out to your folks at LinkedIn, see if you can get the three of us on as like a founders group or some <laughs> some, some some panel. And I'm being very serious about this. There are a lot of us out there that would really like to make LinkedIn work for the better. And we have no, we're not going to take over um, or anything like that. And I think they need to hear from people like us because as, as Brenda said, we are the LinkedIn cheerleaders here. Mm -hmm. No, they're, they're, they definitely need feedback. Well, they, and they yeah. need feedback and they trust you. I don't know if they trust me uh, or not because I'm usually <laughs> complaining do. to them <laughs> for Brenda or Jeff, but I think seriously, that's something we should look at in the new year is let's see if we can get a LinkedIn a group of some type of people like ourselves that we can, we, you know, we're not going to just kind of, we're going to, we'll, we'll trust the process. We want to know what's going on. It's for the greater good. 
So we could be uh, a group called LinkedIn Ambassadors or something along those lines. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't so mind. That's where, that's where Brenda already, comes. Yeah, like, like Brenda said, I'm already a LinkedIn ambassador anyway. We're, we're LinkedIn cheerleaders as it is, right? Because so I, I love the stuff. idea, guys. I just don't, and I'm like cheerleader optimistic all the way about everything. But I'm, just, I'm not optimistic about this because I don't think, I think it comes from the top down and until somebody from the top in LinkedIn leadership says, hey, we should involve the community. Because let's be honest, I mean, even when we connect with people who are LinkedIn employees and we look at their profiles, they're not that great right so they're not they're not even using their team's profiles the way that we know our best i mean they even publish best practices their teams aren't following them uh so i don't know follow the money right those aren't that good so why can't we reach out to ryan why can't we reach out to ryan Ryan just said the magic words she just said the magic words say it again brenda follow the money I mean, if you're, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've been paying premium for a couple of years. I recently upgraded to sales navigator back in my corporate days, we were doing corporate advertising, spending, you know, $25,000 per quarter. At that point, I had somebody at LinkedIn that would listen to me and take suggestions and things like that. But the average user, let's, let's face it. They're using LinkedIn basic for free. Um, so unless LinkedIn moves to a full subscription model and they've got more money to support help desk and submit tickets and all these other things, which will then decrease the usage and the membership and everything else. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I think we could definitely make, I believe in who we are and what we offer and how we want to embrace the LinkedIn community and help LinkedIn to be a better tool. We want, we want to see the audience and the product developers be more effective, but I don't see that the higher ups in LinkedIn are seeing how that trickle down effect could, could work and could help all of them. I think they feel we develop the product. We know how the product will want to be used and if there's not money in it, I mean, it could actually help them to make more money if, oh, if they course. kind of sat down and thought this through, but it's not a short game. It's a long game, yeah. right? So they, I just- They need yeah, to I introduce more features for premium if they want premium to really pay. Yeah. I mean, they've got it with Navigator. They've got it with Recruiter, Talent Solutions. If they want the, the, the regular premium, the business pro, whatever they want to call it, if they want that really to take off, then they need to start putting some features in there you can't get for free. That's exactly right. And, you know, and one of those, and I've always suggested this to them, one of those should be, if you're in the premium, you should be able to say, I want to be on rollout wave one. Right. Right. Because I'm paying. Pay to, pay to play, right? You know? But then again, if I'm a premium and I don't want features that don't always work, right, I might not check that box. But to me, it should be an option, right, that I'm a premium. I want to be in that first rollout. Let me be in there. And then, you know, that would be a reason for someone to pay for premium. But right now there's not enough reason, you know, outside of recruiter and outside of, of sales navigator, there's not a lot of reason. There's some small, not enough to make most people part with, you know, 69 bucks. Yeah. From a strategic standpoint, Kevin, okay. Make things more, put more stuff in the stuff you pay for. But don't take stuff away from the people. No, they should. They should. Yeah, they should be new features somebody. coming in that they're but, bringing so in that's there. That's the philosophy. Yeah. We're going to make this a paid only feature now. So you can only do searches if you pay. Oh, yeah. I don't and think they've done right. that. Oh, they've done that. I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for joining today. And um, I know, Jeff, you can't make it next week. Nope, We're going to do. Um, uh, this, a similar type of session next week um, on, on what we want to see in 2022 um, and maybe beyond. Um, but I want to thank everyone for coming. I wish you all a happy new year, safe new year. Um, I'm going to be just at home. Yep. Just uh, watching the ball, going right to sleep. <laughs> um, so I got I'm the agenda. Gonna... I get to watch the New York ball go down. Right? Well, so I get to go to bed an hour earlier. <laughs> the, you know, it's. I think it's, I'm going to watch the one in London then. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Someday, and I and I said this before. I'll say this publicly again. My goal is to see all of you this year, some way, somehow. Um, That'd be cool. I You're mean, always welcome on my starship, Ken. Sounds great. Right, have a great day, everyone. Thanks a lot. And Jeff will fill the stadium you know, if you come in. What? Jeff will fill the stadium if you come in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everyone. Happy New Year. Take care. Good to see you. Be good. Happy New Year.